Hello, my name is Saif Gallagher. I am a plastic and reconstructive surgeon with a special interest in um, gender affirmation surgery, uh, particularly uh, female to male or non-binary uh, top surgery. So our technique that we use here, my technique is masculoplasty. And I've had a lot of questions from some very smart folks asking exactly how do we know um, that masculoplasty is different uh, than regular top surgery and what the benefits of going drain free so by popular request this is a very nerdy video and uh, i know a lot of you guys uh, definitely are capable of keeping up with this our patients who are mds patients who are scientists so this should be very easy for you but by popular request i'm going to break down our publication in the annals of plastic surgery which uh go through and discuss uh that um what the mascoplasty difference is so i hope you enjoy we published in the Annals of Plastic Surgery earlier uh, in the year and uh, this was put together of course by myself and uh, some great medical students and residents and uh, really in that what we did was we went back and looked through our patients so 306 consecutive meaning one after the other so we can't skip any bad outcomes um, we looked through uh, the results we examined everybody's chart and uh, saw how they did so that's what that means methods is looking uh, is how we put together we skipped anybody we left out anybody who had keyhole surgery because um, that doesn't this technique doesn't really apply and so um, we describe here how we did the technique this is where surgeons learn from papers and journals usually kind of describing uh, our individual steps then what we went through um, was looked at the data we looked at our patient characteristics uh, we looked at some intraoperative meaning um, what were the numbers we got during the surgery, how long did that surgery take, how much did we take off, and then most importantly we looked at how patients did after the surgery. And so at that point what we did was go back and look at other studies that have been published before and compare our results uh, to them. So what you see here is a list of different surgeons uh, who've done these surgeries mainly uh, in Europe and uh, how many mastectomies that they do and then our our um, surgeries down here at 306 of them uh, down uh, below and if you look at our patients you know this being uh, America and Indiana obviously our patients are a lot more likely uh, to be obese uh, so therefore you would think probably have higher rates of complications um, in this surgery obviously we took off uh, a lot of weight um, which would be uh, expected in this group our mean was quite high there but the most important thing I'll draw your attention to is really complications so across here across the top we have the list of all the things that could go wrong uh, with our surgery so the most important one as you can see right here is hematoma so hematoma means when you get blood on the inside when um, a vessel a blood vessel starts bleeding for some reason after you're done with the surgery and oftentimes this means we have to do what's called an acute reoperation so we have to go back in and clean uh, everything up and stop the bleeding so as you can see hematoma is the most important complication uh, when it comes to top surgery seroma is just a regular fluid collection it's actually not as high as you would think but that's the main reason people put in drains surgical site infection here acute reoperation we talked about nipple necrosis secondary corrections other complications wound dehiscence means wound wounds opening up so if you look through our results down below you can see um, which we're very proud of we have the lowest hematoma rates so our hematoma rate we've had one patient we had to reoperate on and that was quite early um, in practice and that patient had actually very high blood pressure which we think uh, contributed uh, to that patient needing to, go back to the, needing to go back to the OR so as you can see it's very low and we've had zero fluid collections despite the fact that we're not putting in drains so obviously the other technique works and then when it comes to results it looks like our reoperation rate is a little bit lower so secondary corrections seems to be a little bit lower there so um I wonder is it because we're putting the tension all across the patient's flaps uh, that we don't have to pull the skin together tightly and we're not creating bad widened scars that is one of the principles in plastic surgery if you want a good scar you have to have what we call a tension free closure so then we go through and in the article they just give different examples of our work as you can see the medical journals don't like tattoos all our patients have fabulous tattoos 
Um, and that's just in summary. So basically, as compared to what we call historical data, a drain-free technique is certainly safe and probably superior. And we had statistically significant um, differences in the rate of hematoma, the need for uh, operating again, and other uh, complications. Uh, so uh, this was a lot of work putting this together. Huge thank you to the residents and uh, med students who helped me, but I hope uh, this answers the question that yes, uh, drain-free top surgery masculoplasty is uh, not only safe, uh, but there you have it, we have the data. This is uh, superior uh, to top surgery where we use drains. Uh, once it's in a medical journal, it's real. And as you can see here, we called it mascoplasty. So that's a real thing. I hope you guys uh, learned something from this.